Let's make sure that I can see the group. Let's see if we're live. One more time. See oh, we're... Hayden got in contact as well. We're in live. We're cool. in live. We're in live. We're in live. We're in live. Okay, guys. So um, if you're coming through, please do let me know uh, if you are live or if you are watching back. Uh, that would be fantastic. Okay. I'm just going to... Um, Jay, could you just shut the kitchen door, please? Thank you. Obviously listening to uh, the wife nagging on with her mum. Right, guys, just give me two seconds. I'm just going to send out the link to everyone to let them know that we're uh, uh, going live with Marcos. Boom, boom. Okay, send that out. And let's send the email out. Dum. All right, guys. So if you're coming through, we're just going to be with you in one sec. We are just organizing our lives. If you're coming through, organizing our lives. All right, so we have, we got James watching, we got David watching, we got Mark here, we got Ross, we got Simon, we got Sean. We're going to let just, just build up a little bit. I'm going to move that here because I want to see Marcus real time via Zoom. And then we're going to get going. Zoom. Let's just turn this off. And then we, okay, cool. All right. So let's get started. So after all of that, apologies uh, for the cluster, cluster fuck. Um, it was just a bit of admin going on there. So um, I'm really excited to announce um, uh, uh, this today's speaker. Been in our world two years. Yeah. 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 Two years. Um, and Marcus um, come to work with us um, after going through some life changing uh, scenarios, shall we say? <laughs> um, and you've incredibly been able to create this incredible life for yourself, um, despite having gone through all of that. So I'm going to let you, I don't want to do it. I want you to go through it. So Marcus, I'd love for you to introduce yourself to everybody um, who's going to be watching now or watching back. Okay. Hi everyone. My name is Marcus Jarvis and i uh... Five years ago, no, four years, yeah, five years ago, I got diagnosed with uh, stage four advanced incurable cancer, and the hospitals gave me um, no hope whatsoever. Uh, I think the prognosis was round about three months, uh, 91 days left to live, so I had to really, really do something to change my life and pull things back around. Uh, they put me on palliative chemo and just sent me away and um i had to go back to the hospital every two weeks to have uh, six hours infusion of chemo and then have a, a pump sent home for a 48 hour uh, infusion over the weekend and so me my wife and i had a four-year-old little boy at the time uh we had to make a decision whether uh, i was going to live or die and that was as simple as that choice but the the depths that we went down to the literally the bottom of the pile of the pit after having a diagnosis like that and um we started doing research on cancer and we read everything that we possibly could to actually uh help and um have a little bit of a chance sort of thing and we were taking our little boy to school and then coming home and we started going for walks and then started coming, like doing exercise, running. Me and my wife would run every day together whilst I was on chemo. But it was a real struggle because we were on our own. 
for the best part of a year. And um, then someone gave me uh, your book, James. And uh, I remember reading that and uh, it just literally smashed time. So it must be four years since we've known. Yeah. Uh, you read the first book, didn't you? Is it State yeah. of Mind? Yeah. I State of gave a load of books to Justin to put Justin. into. Um, well, come on to the charity. Um, but they, he used to put loads of books in the packages, didn't he? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And he was giving them out to people, obviously, with um, with cancer. And yeah. obviously, being a cancer diagnosis, everyone fears the word cancer. And when you're in that situation, you don't understand how deep that word can actually cut. I mean, a lot of people try and shy away from the word, but when you've got cancer, there's no running away. There's no hiding because cancer doesn't stop. So it's going to keep coming for you. And it's what you make of that situation. And I remember reading your book and like the the 1% rule and the mission just stuck in my head. And I was like, right, okay. When you're at the lowest of low, and then you read a book like that, it just changes everything. And there's that switch that happens in your head. And then you've done the five day challenge. And I remember jumping on the call with you and um, literally I was close to tears when I was telling telling my story and everyone yeah. was like, whoa, you know, how the hell are you still here sort of thing. And it just kept growing from there. And we've, we've just having those little snippets just to put together with the diet and then I started running and um the the mental ability to be able to go right no let's get up let's get what we need to do let's journal about your day let's let's just have those little pieces in place and I ended up running two and a half thousand miles whilst I was on 35 rounds of chemotherapy and just having that right I'm going to be one percent better yeah. tomorrow and then the next day and, uh, oh, yeah. i can't wait to share the story of our first seminar and you showing up but we'll get to that so listen before you got this diagnosis from like from the hospital what was your life like beforehand what were you doing um with your life oh it's just a like a builder and i have my own company but i was always a victim like, oh, why me? Why can't I get this quote? Why can't, why can't I win that job? You know, and I was just plodding along, firefighting, uh, had real, no, no real focus. And obviously then I had um, like stomach problems and pains and everything else. And then going back and forth to the hospital and the doctors. And then, you know, literally beforehand, I was completely different to what I am now because uh, I was a victim. At the end of the day, I was like, oh, why me? You know, and then obviously when I got that diagnosis, so it's just like, well, it is me. You know, <laughs> there is no running away from this. So I had to uh, pull my big boy trousers up and uh, get on with it. But like I say, I was still firefighting a lot until I come across your come across your book. And that's sort of what I can honestly say really changed a lot in my life. So I think, so. It's, it's great to hear that as well. I think so like when... Um, we spoke about resilience last night with the guys. So we went through, okay, this is what resilience is. This is what it overcomes. Um, like when you obviously found out, it's probably a shock to the system. I think no matter who you are, doesn't matter how strong you are, you've got to come to terms with that somehow. Um, were you resilient at the start or is it something that you just, you your personality and identity grew into? Uh, my personality and identity grew into because... Uh, thinking that I've only got a few months left to live and they told me I wouldn't make my little boy's fifth birthday uh, oh. and I was just like I had a focus then um, but like I say I didn't know really what direction or anything to go in until you know it just built up over time and I found that I got more and more resilient even to chemo uh, being able to run uh, on chemo I just built up that resilience of just over and over again each day i'd put my trainers on and i'd run a little bit further and a little bit further yeah. until the point i was running six miles every day and i even turned up to a marathon uh the day after chemo and <laughs> sort of like with with my pump and pick line still attached sort of thing and i was still getting chemo whilst i was running marathons so and people oh, thought there's something wrong with you i was like yeah i've got stage four cancer <laughs> 
Uh, I think that um, I think that like you know when you become a different beast, don't you? I think like when that happens. So like you, you and listen, like the things that we were talking about last night is that I was trying to emphasize to a lot of the guys a lot of the things that guys get stressed about on the day to day business, like um, they actually don't matter. Like ninety nine point nine percent of things don't matter. Like I I pretty much reckon there's nothing that would phase you right now in life again really like you know apart from i i don't know like you know something very very had to have to be super severe for it for you to be triggered because all of the things that you used to get stressed about and what you see guys getting stressed about when you value life like you do and you've had to fight for your life like you did yeah. you suddenly have that epiphany that actually everything else around me all those stresses that we think are stress it's really it's just the ducks off the water's back isn't it yeah yeah when it comes down to basics you know you are uh you basically so it doesn't matter what car you've got what house you've got or what job you've got or or where you're going in life you can you can lose all that and then regain it but yeah. if you don't take it back to basics and look after yourself you need to be healthy within to be able to achieve without sort of thing, you know? And, yeah. and that's the thing I can get rid of everything. If someone said to me tomorrow or today, uh, sorry, we're taking your car away. Uh, I'd be like, well, I've got feet, you know, yeah. I can run yeah. everywhere. It doesn't matter yeah. to me. sort of thing. So it's those little things and it's those, like the way you talk to yourself inside, what's important. So many people think, well, my car is important. This is important. That's important. But when it comes to it, it's your mental health and your physical health, which is most important because that's what got you to get in that car. You know, yeah. And if you want a better car, you need to look after yourself to be able to have that mentality to be able to push on from there. Yeah, so I agree. Really face me. I agree. Like, what are your personal thoughts and why, like, based on your own experience as well, where before all of this happened, you know, what are your thoughts on um, why so many men neglect themselves? Because uh, it's, we're brought up in a society of, um, you know, we've got to provide for our families and, and look after other people, but we forget to look after ourselves. We forget mm -hmm. that we need to be that strongest person. So we're we're always firefighting. We're we're looking after our bosses. So, you know, when the boss calls, yeah, I'll, I'll be into work or and things like that. We never actually take time for ourselves to build our own mental strength to yeah. be able to help everyone around us. And that's where I've changed in my life. My mental strength is so strong that I can give so many other people help, advice, support because. I don't need to worry about myself anymore because I've got such a good, strong regime of the morning routine, the journal, and, and it's so natural for me that I wake up in the morning and I find my trainers are already on and I'm already out the door, already running six miles before I actually realise I am actually running six miles sort of thing and, and yeah. things like that. Ingrained. Because, yeah, it is ingrained and you have to do that over and over again. Uh, motivation doesn't come into it. And our motivation is just a load of pants. There's just no point in even having the word about it's it's discipline. It's finding something that is your passion. And if you don't like doing what you're doing, change something else. So if you don't like running, don't run. If you prefer going to the gym, go to the gym. If you prefer taking a dog for walk, take a dog for walk. Choose what you want to you know, give you the most um most out of your life sort of thing so and look after yourself first before you look after others 100 percent. and and i think about your journey when you joined us you you did uh, one of the programs early on didn't you You kind of come on board and we built up that mission so would you say <clears throat> would you say it's a reprogramming reprogramming process like yes. in terms of for you and your own journey like is it reprogramming uh you know how many times did you fail as well Oh, loads of times. Within the first first like uh, year, I kept like changing my routine and changing this. And oh, I'm not going to go out for a run today. Uh, but then I had that right cancer still chasing me, so I had that kick up the ass. Yeah. So I'm lucky compared to a lot of people uh, because other people have tomorrow. 
but I didn't know if I had tomorrow. So I had to get up and go and do that today. And yeah, yeah I failed many times. I, I found things that I didn't enjoy. So I changed it and it wasn't so much failing. It was finding the process of what fitted my lifestyle and how everything went and then went on from there. So, so yeah, you have to fail to grow. You have to be uncomfortable yeah. to grow as well online. And what did the feelings of failure kind of, um, how, how has that relationship evolved over the time? So like, if you think about like, uh, for me, when I first started to fail at things, um, I actually never admitted that I used to fail. I used to like, I don't like all these people talking about, I don't really feel like a fail. And actually that's such an egotistical thing to say, right? I didn't really actually recognize what I was failing at around me. Um, and then when I did come to recognize the failures, um, my self-worth and confidence dipped quite a lot. And then I built up that resilience to failure as you know that relationship with it in terms of going ah, oh, but this is actually just part of the process and actually i've learned a lot more but actually if i fail a little bit quicker and a little bit more it means i'm showing up more and so i've got this relationship now where you almost show up to fail because the fail is going to give you the teachings you need to win and it's almost like it's almost like to win we have to go through some element of failure to build the character what, yeah. what about you uh, yeah, I would totally agree with that because I I love failing. I look for failure. I look thinking, right, okay, if I do this, you know, hopefully it won't fail, but it does. But then you're like, right, okay, I've learned that mistake and that's it. You know, and you do, I mean, I've failed miserably. I've got cancer. I mean, you you can't get much more of a failure in life than getting stage four cancer and telling you're going to die. You know, that's that's like the the biggest failure and coming back from that. I love that process. Yeah. Just building my life back up. And I reckon I've achieved more in the last four years. Yeah. Uh, mentally, socially, physically, uh, romantically uh, and business than I have in the 46 years leading up to where I am, you know, because I mean, I'm nearly 50 now sort of thing. So just having that process of file and uh, achieve, file and achieve, file and achieve. And you almost get to the stage where you can see where the failures are and yeah. you can almost bypass it and go, right, okay, I know not to do that. So I, cause it's not going to work. So think outside the box and that's where meditation, Tai Chi uh, and breath work and, like you know with the cold regulation uh, right. you have that time for yourself the two minutes in the ice bath clears your mind and yeah. you can think of so many yeah, yeah. problems just yeah. like that so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really interested in um i'm really interested in how because you said something there and i was like god i was, I, I was really interested in why you said that why do you see getting cancer as failure when it's not something you have control over um, well, it is something I had control over because okay. I believe it was it was my fault that I got cancer. Uh, my diet was rubbish. My uh, stress levels were rubbish. My sleep was rubbish. Uh, my whole entire life and environment okay. was was not in a healthy, uh, happy place. So you know, looking back on it, yeah, it's something to do with environment and everything else. But at the end of the day, that was my body that kicked the cancer cells off because of what I done. So, okay. That's interesting. And like, um, how long, you know, that what you've just spoken about, how many years were you in that state for? Um, well, like leading up to uh, when I first got diagnosed, I mean, I was probably, what, 10, 10, 12 years, uh, 10, 12 years. What, with crap diet, stress? Yeah, loss. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, obviously uh, a trauma because uh, it only takes a trauma, a bad diet, a stressful day, someone cutting you off, and your boss shouting at you just to trigger one one uh, cell to go rogue. But then if you go down that spiral of why me victim mentality over and yeah. over again and carry on over and over, but if you change, if you had a crap day and never have a good day, your body is reset. So yeah. that's the difference. Whereas if you have a crap day and then think, oh, yesterday was crap, tomorrow's crap, next day, next day, next yeah. day. That's why you go into your spiral of bad eating uh, and just trying to build the energy yeah. up. Okay. 
for a minute, I was really worried because you were going to say, if you have a really bad day, then you're likely to get cancer. I was like, well, that's me. That is me. <laughs> no, 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 it takes takes a long process to yeah. normally to go from uh, a cancer to um, like a diagnosis. You're looking between five and 10 years most of the time. Wow. It takes that long of a just rubbish situation to be yeah. in. You know, so I, I mean, I'd go to work and I'd hate my job so much. I think, well, if I crash into a tree and broke my leg, I wouldn't have to go to work for a like. Um, that really is a place to be, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. And when you're that dark sort of thing, you know. So, yeah. so I'm glad I'm, that I got cancer because it woke me the fuck up. You know, yeah, it's, it is mad how you think that, isn't it? Because I think often that about my that's that point when I was going to take my own life. Like I glad I got to that stage. And I know it's like people are like, would you change anything about your past? And I'd like, I'd never change one thing because every mistake I've made has led me to like where I am, and I feel content where I am. Do you know what I mean? And um, I remember reading that bit in the book and I was just sitting there just crying and I I almost I mean my mind was obviously different to what your situation was but you were still in that such dark place and yeah. I was just sitting there crying thinking yeah I know exactly what this guy is going through and yeah. like like I was so fixed in the book because I wanted you to survive you know, and I wanted to read the next page and read the next. And I'm, I'm, I'm dyslexic, so for me to read, it took me a long time to read it. <laughs> like, well, it's not. It's probably my writing. <laughs> yeah, a bit of both. I probably understood it because of your writing. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Cool. All right. So, like, you've just found out that you've got ninety days to live. Um, what was the plan of action? Uh, the plan of action was obviously spend as much time with family um because we we didn't know um whether there was any hope or anything else and but we just thought like we're sinking in quicksand but there's a branch there let's reach for it you know you might not be able to grab it and pull yourself out but isn't it worth trying yeah. just to just to go right okay let's see what one apple does let's see what one juice does let's see what one run does and i just kept getting more and more physically fit and i even ran a 55k ultra on chemo because i had that mental uh, resilience to go right let's get up let's do a bit more let's see what we're capable of and it almost got to the stage where i was running to hospital having chemo and then running home and it would be snowing middle of winter and i'd have no t-shirt on just a pair of shorts just because I've read uh, like the Wim Hof book, which is all about cold exposure and, and obviously cancer, it boosts your immune system and you need a good healthy immune system to be able to fight cancer. Okay, so, so straight away we started off the process with, it's almost like that 1%, like you said, right? It's like just the one run, just the one juice yeah. um, and changing the diet, changing the running. So um, when 90 days come and you were meant to have died, what happened then were you like how come i'm not dead yeah well i the 90 days was actually my first scan so i went and had my first scan and uh considering i had multiple tumors on my liver uh mine was suspected pancreatic was secondary on the liver and i think i had about 12 tumors on my liver and one of them was like 12 centimeters across and that's why they couldn't operate. It was too advanced. Uh, and it was just a basically palette of chemo to try and keep me alive as long as possible. But when I went for my first scan, the largest tumor had shrunk from 12 centimeters down to 8.5 centimeters within wow. three months. And the hospitals were like, well, don't know what you've been doing, but you know this shouldn't no. be happening. So that's just carry on sort of thing so I, and yeah that was that first initial uh achievement you know yeah. that was that was like like the 10-year goal that was my one-year achievement to get yeah. to my five or ten year goal sort of thing so so yeah we came away from there going uh the ct machine was broken that must be wrong that must be someone else's uh yeah um it results but then me and my wife um we just sat there and just went what if it isn't what if what we are doing is getting us where we're going and isn't it worth just carrying on down that route and let's just kept pushing from there sort of thing. Right. Okay. 
So um, we kind of got to that stage. We've gone past 90 days. The change in lifestyle is having this like this incredible outcome. Yeah. Um, what about your what about your mindset at that 90 days when you realized that that had shrunk? Did that did you just then go like, let's go, let's get to work, let's double down on everything? Did it become almost obsessive? It did become obsessive, but I was still firefight and I still had no structure or routine. Okay. And so it was a little bit of a haphazard. Of, oh my God, you know, let's let's just keep doing what we're doing and see if we yeah. can add something else. But there was no proper structure there, sort of thing. So it was I wasn't there. Is it is it because was it because like you didn't know how to put structure in place, or was it because no. you, you were too lazy, or was it because what was it? I didn't know how to plan it. I never have known how to plan it. And um, that's why I was so thankful for like um, when I finally done your five day challenge, it was just clicked in my head. I went, oh, it's that simple. Why didn't I know this before? But school how had never you? taught me. How yeah. would you? Yeah, you yeah. School had never taught me or anything else. Yeah. Um, so that's when things started to come into play, when I was going to go for a run, when I was going to juice, when I was going to fast, when I was Tai Chi, uh, cold ice baths, and and just having that, someone to explain something to you, you know, like I'll be forever thankful for you for that because, you know, it's like someone coming to you as a, like a diet and writing out a diet and you can look at it and go, right, I need to eat this on here, this, this time, this, this time. But without that, you just, you know, you, you're lost sort of thing. So sometimes everyone needs guidance. Everyone needs focus because you can't do it on your own. I learned that, you know, beating cancer. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you, you need people around you, like good friends, good family, good mentors, uh, a good structure and everything else. So, I, so, yeah, it wasn't I was still firefighting at that point until, you know, until I came across the mission. I think. Yeah. So I, so let's talk about that. So, uh, so for the, my first seminar was um, in Aston Villa Stadium. I think we had about eighty guys there, and it was snowing. Do you remember it was snowing? Yeah, yeah, it was. This fucking madman come running up the stairs, like, and I happened to be around near the lobby where everyone was coming in, and you're in your little black shorts, yeah, and topless. And did you have you did you have wires on you at the time? You'll keep like keep. Yeah, back. yeah, I still had um, my pump and pick line. Right. Everyone's yeah. going, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That. it was brilliant. Yeah. And then fast forward on to November 2023, two years later. Yeah, yeah. Getting a standing evasion to 120 guys who had come to like listen to you talk about that story, right? Which yeah. was a huge yeah. milestone for you. Yeah. Now, when you first arrived in 2021, did you still have can you were were you in yes. remission? You still no, had I, I still had cancer at that point, not a thing. So I and so when did you become cancer free? It was um it was the Christmas after that. So November I came to you for the yeah. seminar, and then December is when I got the news that I was all clear. So technically I'd already had a scan when I see you, but I never got the results uh until the uh, uh, in uh, beginning of December, so it's a few weeks later. So yeah. technically, I was cancer free, but I hadn't got the actual yeah. all clear sort of thing. So, yeah. what did they put it down to? How can they explain that um, you were due to die in ninety days, but now you had run and be <laughs> ironic, basically, yep. and juicy? <laughs> yeah, uh, they put it down to I responded far beyond their expectations on chemotherapy, and that that's. That's what they put. Even though I told them that I'd run, uh, I I wasn't even supposed to have um, like touch anything cold whilst I was on the chemotherapy that I had. Yeah. Because I could have gone into an anaphylactic shock. Right. And I was supposed to carry an EpiPen with me, but never bothered. <laughs> and I was getting in ice baths and everything else. And uh, right. it just goes to show that not everyone knows everything. Right. I mean, I... It was obviously my life, my risk. So yeah, I never, never advise anyone else to go out and do things like that. I just knew that something was there protecting me to actually go ahead and try these things. Like, most, I think yeah, most people are just, I was told to go home and eat cake and enjoy what I had left. 
and that was that was their advice so thanks okay. all yeah. right okay so guys if you, I, there are some questions we're going to go through already if you do have any specific questions for marcus now's the time to start asking them as we start wrapping up this chat and then we come to the questions um so in terms of like when you come to work with us in terms of building a life mission how has that helped you on your journey um in terms of like the things that it's helped you do so for for context marcus now has pretty much just coming into joining the, the team um so we've got me um we've got john who's my number two and you guys are going to meet john on friday um we've got uh uncle mike who's our mikey b he is like an utter legend as well he is almost like what we call the enforcer within the within the community so mike is our one of our support coaches um he supports a lot of the men does calls with them encourages them he did a focus call last night when we were um doing the second session and then marcus is gonna bring some of his inspiration in to the guys to get up get out and get amongst it as well so um we're building up a really great team it's not just me for those people that come come into our world is there's a whole there's there's over a hundred years worth of experience we've got guys who've been deep in corporate guys who have been to war guys who have fought cancer it's like a pretty fucking dynamite team um so how did that life mission help you Are you still there uh, yeah yeah sorry yeah, for, for I, I me. It. yeah so how did how did that life mission for you how did having a life mission for you help you in in everything? Look at the um, guns, by the way. You what? You're, look at the guns. <laughs> huh? That's right. That's that's your workout programs. <laughs> I, I, do, I do your workout programs on the classroom. <laughs> I, I'll make sure I do that as well. I, okay. um, the I would never public speak. You know, beforehand, before I got cancer, I would never. Um, talk out in public i hated it i just wanted to be in the background and hide away and everything else and once i got cancer and obviously you gave me the opportunity to stand up on stage and everything else i mean the amount of times i won the bottle that the amount of times i'm like i can't do this and then i thought to myself one person in that crowd might listen to my words and they might go do you know what i need to do something i need to change i need to be that warrior within to wake that up to get to where i'm going to go and you're not going to get anywhere in life if you don't put yourself out there and i've got to realize that especially through doing the talk for you coming on these rooms and everything else i mean i could quite easily just shy away and not do anything but i know it's the drive of someone might need that help i mean i'm talking to people all over the world from las vegas that's um like cancer wants help and support and i'm I'm doing that whereas like i'd have never done that before so yeah. it's really helped me in my strength of self-belief and um my confidence and just everything in life is just completely I mean, if you see me before as a builder and then you see me as now yeah you're like whoa what a difference and i've even noticed a difference and it feels great yeah to have that difference in life as well sort of thing so yeah it's definitely changed my life uh throughout the process and everything else and i'm a fitter stronger more healthier mental and the ability to just take on anything i mean if you told me to run 100 miles tomorrow i'd just go and try and do it so uh, saying that in three weeks two in three weeks time i am going to try i'm doing a 100 miler in three weeks time so uh, so that's yeah, that's going to be a great challenge and i think that will be a great finish to um not a finish as in it's finished but a great like milestone of everything you've achieved um yeah. because having done 100 miles or, or two of them i know just how like gut-wrenching they are but you're going to yeah. be fine so we've got some questions yep um uh, bah, 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 bah. so did you keep track of your changes to your day like each run did you measure the success for each of these? And how often did you reflect on the changes? Uh, everything was done through my Garmin watch. So I could track my cadence, my distance, uh, my heart rate, my breathing. Yeah. The funny thing was I'd run to hospital and my heart rate will be like uh, around about 150. Then I'd have chemo and then I'd run home 
like six miles and my heart rate will be like over 200. So it just goes to show how poisonous something like that is to, to change your heart rate from 140 to 150 yeah. and way up to 200. And then the next day it would be 190, 180, all the way down until you had your next round of chemo, then it was 200 again. Sort of thing. What is chemo? Like I, like what, what do they put, do, what do they put into you? I'm not, I don't it's, really know. Uh, the, um, it's chemical warfare. It's okay. um, the, it derives from mustard gas, I do believe, which is what they poisoned the Jews with. And uh, they found that when they'd done autopsies on the, the Jewish, uh, the ones that had cancer, their tumors had shrunk or disappeared. So what they done, they took that um, gas that they poisoned with and yeah. turned it into a liquid. And uh, obviously, that wasn't as potent as what it was back back then, sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah, it's something to do with like chemical warfare and mustard gas, sort of thing, from there. Interesting. Never really known. Yeah. Um, Simon uh, Stillwell, he's a, I love Mark as a story, a true spot in meeting him last seminar. Just a very humble to meet him and inspiration. Bless him. Thank you. Um, uh, Chris, incredible. Can you help me understand what your approach was to juicing? Uh, I try to do 80-20. Uh, so uh, you, you want to cut out the sugars, whereas obviously apples, oranges, uh, and any fruits are where your sugars are. Yeah. Uh, whereas the vegetables like um, uh, uh, kale and broccoli and uh uh, things like that that's where all your vitamin c's and your your minerals are so if you can do a 80 20 so you do 80 percent vegetables and 20 percent juice just chuck an orange in there or an apple just to make it not taste so earthy sort of thing so that's that's what i had approached was and literally whatever you got in the fridge like cucumbers beetroots uh kale broccoli uh ginger and turmeric root uh just chuck it all in the juice and put it through and then just chuck an apple in there mm. Uh, Danny Burgess, inspirational stuff. Sean, uh, Marcus, after completing the old, uh, ultimate life mission, how do you find a new mission to compare and can you share it? Uh, yeah, to, to beat cancer was definitely the ultimate uh, challenge and I do struggle to try and find another challenge as, as good as that one uh, to actually... I thought about it, really. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm running uh, around 100k last weekend yeah and that was really nice but i was ill the week before so i really really struggled on that and that took me to some like really dark places to get to the end but i had to take like david goggins a cookie jar where you take bits out it's like right stop complaining you beat cancer and sort of things like that so i've always got that to dip back to but i do try to look for a challenge for myself but i never judge my new challenge with cancer or anything else because yeah. you know i think it's going to be hard to to mirror up with that so each challenge for me is like a complete new challenge is is like the 100k i've done last week yeah when i did 100 mile in three weeks time i'm not going to take anything from that apart from using that as a training day that was just my training day to be able to go and do the 100 so each challenge is a separate challenge for me it's like a fresh slate every single time yeah. every single time yeah um don't judge yesterday against today because it's going to be completely different uh, yeah percent. marcus see you on strava i would love to follow you uh to, to get more inspired or more inspiration yeah yeah it's just marcus jarvis marcus I'll... jarvis guys so it's just exactly as it sounds um yeah. I, think, I think that's it so i think for me like you know i've heard the story but i think it's really incredible in terms of it always is every time we come back to it um about what you've done um one question I've kind of got for you, do you um, ever, do you ever get complacent in life and you've almost forgotten what you've gone through and have to snap yourself out of it? Yes. Yeah. I almost like when I start a conversation and like, you know, if someone asks me about like, no, oh, I've heard about your, your, your journey. I'm just like, yeah, it's just stage four cancer, you know, but then you say that, you know, I say that in a conversation now because my problem is I don't have any fear of cancer. Yeah. If I got cancer back tomorrow, I'd just get up and go and do everything that I was doing. Yeah. Uh, because obviously I come off of the wagon type thing. So if I got cancer back, I'll just 
get straight back on the wagon and go right let's smash this let's do this let's do this, let's do this but obviously my uh insight now is to just carry on doing what i'm doing because it's working and i'm still cancer free and yeah. so i will just keep fighting from there but yes it is very easy to uh yeah just shrug your shoulders just it's just a common cold yeah. sort of <laughs> Well, I do. I, like, I totally get it. You know, this is nowhere near the same thing, but I think there is that level of complacency. So <clears throat> it took me seven years to be able to get the house like this house. Like this is all like we don't have materialistic things. We always just wanted a nice house. Right. And sometimes when you live here, like we used to drive through the neighborhood and go, imagine if we got that house. Imagine if we could just play basketball, you know, like and you would and you forget that and you're in yeah. here fucking hell, like this house and you just yep. forget how hard you've worked yeah yeah you get here um and it's sometimes you have to go back to that point don't you one of the guys has asked you do you eat any crap now i know you don't no no, no i don't uh only uh probably a small bit of birthday cake on my uh, boy's birthday once a year but other than that and then i have a massive sugar crash and i feel like shit so i have to go and lay down so i just you know I don't I don't enjoy the the crap eaten. I enjoy the the energy I get from just having really good healthy foods like salads and uh like I'm, I'm plant based as well. So I don't eat any meat. You know? I'm not saying that everyone needs to cut out meat because that's but I just found I didn't need meat anymore. You know? So I, I still do a plant based diet, but I, I try to very rarely eat uh, any crap. Sort of thing. Yeah. And I think that's important, isn't it? It's individual, but it's individual choice. It's just like, you know, and, and I think the whole experience has created a new man, a new future, yeah. you know, and, and may it long last, you know, in terms of that unbreakable mindset. And I think that um, for many people watching, listening, whether it's on the podcast and stuff, you know, I think it's important to understand that what you've gone through, what you've gone through, Marcus, in terms of that should be the inspiration for a lot of guys that actually there are no excuses there's yeah. nothing that should stop you from reaching that potential and getting to the very highest level of showing up right is yeah. is if that if a if a if a guy who just used to be a, a normal average joe uh, mm -hmm. run a building company like yeah. stress diet like my, where most people are the business owners or career driven the stress from it and you've come back and almost i always look at you as what like that superman figure like it's incredible what you do but it is in it and it is you know um and it's it, it is inspiring and it does make you show up and you, when you do start making excuses i think about you and go fucking hell look what marcus went through get the fuck on with it like and it's doing what is required regardless of how you feel right yeah yeah like, you, 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 every single day you're not going to be like oh let's go for it this is like brilliant like yeah. life doesn't work like that it's still doing what is required regardless and i think yeah. that's key yeah. is there any final message that you would leave to any of the guys uh i would like almost like want to take away tomorrow so uh just just look at your life and and like if you didn't have tomorrow what would you achieve today how hard would you push to get everything done today and that was where i was i didn't know if i had to tomorrow so i had to make everything count today because like too many people have tomorrow or have next week or oh, i'll make that phone call in a couple of days but in a couple of days that person you need to phone might not be in the country so you can't get hold of them so when you think about it get it done you know procrastination is the killer of all accomplishments you know so if you feel as though you're procrastinating about something count to 10 and get it done and yeah. that's it all right i agree i think like what we're talking now is embracing the real important things in life i think embracing life is part is one is like purpose direction embracing life and embracing life is embrace embracing the journey um embracing the moment and, and embracing the journey right and i think that's and that's like what wilo stands for we only live once we only live once make it count. yeah, yeah. Make it count. Yeah. marcus thank you so much um i'll drop your voice note after this but guys sure. um marcus is uh in the group you're in the group, yeah. aren't you? So, like, yes. yep. know what you thought of this if you're watching it back. If you listen on the podcast, just drop us an email and we can pass on all those comments to Marcus. You, yeah. you, you see a lot more of him anyway as, as he becomes part of our yeah. faculty. I'm here to help. Here to help. We've got a lot of experience. Um, so, thank you for watching, guys. Let us know what you thought of it if you're coming back. Um, 
I don't know how to stop this live. So I was going to cut out the meeting. So I'll give you a message after. Yeah. Guys, no, sure. thank you so much, Marcus. Again, thank you for your time. Massively appreciate you. Take care. See you guys. See you later.